SpaceX and Blue Origin have been at each other's throats for the past couple of years. But now, in a surprising turn of events, the two titans are set to collaborate on a project. SpaceX, Blue Origin, and a few other companies were recently awarded NASA contracts to develop moon lander concepts for future Artemis missions. So how will the rivals work together? As part of NASA's Artemis program, the agency awarded a combined $146 million in contracts to five companies. The contracts include $9.5 $4 million going to SpaceX, $25.6 million to Blue Origin, $40.8 million to Dynetics, $35.2 million to Lockheed Martin, and $34.8 million to Northrop Grumman. Cook and Chevalier Enterprises and Blue Ridge Nebula Starlines were the only companies that submitted proposals and didn't get contracts. According to NASA, the objective of the contracts is to develop moon lander design concepts, including conducting component tests and analyzing them for stuff like performance and safety. These designs will be developed over the next 15 months, evaluating their performance, design, construction standards, medical capabilities, crew health accommodations, and general safety. According to NASA's Kathy Luters, establishing a long-term human presence on the moon by using lunar landers is a major goal for the Artemis mission. This will lay the foundation for the U.S. to learn more about the moon and how to live and work off-planet in deep space for future missions that will travel farther into our solar system. Before you rack your brain and start to think this is familiar, we should mentioned that these contracts are separate from the human landing system contract that was awarded to SpaceX earlier this year. You know, the one that Blue Origin disputed to a government watchdog, and later in a lawsuit against NASA, which is still ongoing. So, the obvious question is, why would NASA even get into business with the company that's out for its blood? Some people might think of Blue Origin's contract as little more than a consolation prize. After losing out on the huge $2.9 billion HLS contract that was awarded to SpaceX, losing out on this contract may have been the straw that broke Blue Origin's back. Why? Because of the messy lawsuit that has effectively crippled the development of the HLS, and by extension, the Artemis project as a whole. Yes, people, mankind's return to the moon could be delayed by a tantrum. These recent events have only added fuel to the fiery rivalry between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. And if you happen to be on Twitter, you already know who's winning. According to Ars Technica, an anonymous source from NASA claimed that because of the lawsuit against NASA, Blue Origin would never get another the real government contract after what it had done. Could that be true? Let's take a look at the latest contract NASA awarded to Blue Origin. All five of these new contracts are under NASA's Next Space Technologies for Exploration Partnerships Appendix N, Sustainable Human Landing System Studies and Risk Reduction. Here's the curveball. It's actually under a different section of the same HLS contract awarded to SpaceX in August. What that means is Blue Origin may not be working for NASA, but may actually be working to support SpaceX's vision for for NASA's HLS. Definitely not what Bezos had in mind. To retain a competitive environment, NASA announced that it would get recurring landing services from American companies. These recurring contracts will be for operational missions to the lunar surface after SpaceX's demonstration missions. According to the agency, the most recent contracts would ultimately help shape the strategy and requirements for NASA's pick to provide regular astronaut transportation from lunar orbit to the surface of the moon. The amount of those future recurring service awards will be determined determined by congressional appropriations. It should be noted that Blue Origin's proposal came from what it refers to as its national team, which includes Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper. As we'd mentioned earlier, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman were also awarded individual separate contracts under Appendix N. Speaking to TechCrunch, a Blue Origin spokesperson explained that under this contract, the national team will conduct critical studies and risk reduction activities that will contribute to sustainable lander concepts in the future. Blue Origin will also work closely with a multitude of other companies and NASA field centers across the nation. After winning its contract this week, Northrop Grumman said that it remained committed to the national team, but was also keeping its options open. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Northrop Grumman's Vice President of Civil and Commercial Satellites, Steve Krein, said that Northrop continues to work in partnership with Blue Origin and the national team to meet NASA's ambitious goals to return to the moon and go to Mars. On top of these collective efforts, Northrop Grumman will also be providing its unique skills and capabilities to exploring alternative perspectives for a long-term sustainable program to take humans back to the moon. 
and even settle there. According to Ars Technica, an unnamed source confirmed that the national team is likely to stick together, so long as there's a chance to win the original contract, the one NASA chose to award solely to SpaceX. The lawsuit against NASA is expected to be settled by November 1st. During this time, NASA's agreed to keep its contract with SpaceX intact until that date. For now, details about the lawsuit remain unknown, and after the courts have made their decision, we expect to learn what this will mean for SpaceX's contract and for the national team's fate. If the legal challenge is unsuccessful, the individual members of the national team are preparing to go their own ways. The Artemis program was formally established in 2017 with a number of objectives, the most notable one being returning humans to the moon for the first time since the Apollo days, and make such travel more or less normal by the late 2020s. The program began as part of the reorganization and continuation of successive efforts to revitalize the U.S. space program since 2009. The Artemis program's short-term goal is to land the first woman and person of color on the moon by 2024. The midterm goal is to establish a sustainable presence on the moon with an international expedition team. The long-term objectives are even loftier and include laying the foundations for private companies to build a lunar economy and, eventually, make sending humans to Mars and beyond possible. Artemis is carried out predominantly by NASA and the U.S. commercial spaceflight contractors we discussed earlier, in partnership with the space agencies of the European Union and 11 other nations. Other countries have been invited to join the program by signing the Governing Artemis Accords, which have remained open for signature since October 2020. The preliminary short-term plan involves using both commercial rockets and NASA's space launch system, the Orion crew capsule, and the unlikely cause of so much chaos already, the Lunar Landing System. A small space station in lunar orbit called the Gateway would serve future missions to the moon's surface. We've already established that as it stands, the lunar landing system will be developed by SpaceX, with the other space companies contributing ideas and data as well. But what about the rest of the Artemis project? How exactly are we going to get to the moon? Enter the Space Launch System. The SLS is a massive rocket based on technology borrowed from the iconic Space Shuttle. Essentially, it is a larger version of the shuttle stack that trades out the winged orbiter for either cargo or the Orion crew capsule on top. The vehicle's core stage is an elongated shuttle external fuel tank powered by four Space Shuttle RS-25 main engines. These engines were refurbished for use during the old shuttle program, but for SLS, they'll be ditched in the ocean after use. A pair of five-segment Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters assist the core stage during the initial phase of flight. Once its development is complete, SLS will be the most powerful rocket that NASA has ever built, and will weigh a mind-numbing 2,494 tons, which is equivalent to 5.5 million pounds. SLS will be used on the program's first uncrewed mission called Artemis 1, slated for December 2021, and will send NASA's next generation crew vehicle, Orion, around the moon to thoroughly test its systems. Now for one second, let's just take a closer look at Orion. Orion is a crew vehicle capable of supporting up to four astronauts on deep space journeys. It's similar in concept to the Apollo capsules, but is significantly larger and has a decked out interior. Unlike capsules designed solely for transportation to low Earth orbit, Orion's heat shield can withstand the high velocity re-entry necessary when returning from deep space. After a whole lot of bloopers, delays, and disappointing projects, things are finally looking up for NASA. And by bringing rivals together to form unprecedented collaborations on the Artemis mission, NASA may be back on the moon sooner than we all thought. How do you think SpaceX and Blue Origin working together will affect the Artemis project? Let us know all of this and anything else that's on your mind down in the comments section below.